Um, the way I went through was after I got my um, equal numerators, I let x equal 2, that got rid of some terms for me. I let x equal 0, that solved c, then b, and then I actually did exactly the same. I compared the x squared terms. Why is it that comparing the x squared terms, or rather, I should say, comparing the degree terms, why is that such a, why did that come up more than once? Like, I know we're them too, but there's a reason why. It's because it's like, you can see it easily. It's the easiest to see, right? If you have a look at any other term, you're like, oh, gross. <laughs> it could come from here and here and here. Um, really what you want is terms on this end or terms on that end. The constant term would have been just as easy to find. Do you notice that? The constant term, it can only come from here and here. Yes, but if you're doing anything in between, um, if for example the um, degree was say x cubed, right? If you're doing the x squared terms or the x terms, you're gonna have to be like, wait, which one is it? And almost certainly you'll forget. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me show you this question now. I want to say some big flashing lights. This question, in the form that I have phrased it to you, not accessible. Not in the syllabus, in fact, okay? I'm going to show you how to do it anyway because it just goes with the normal flow of what we've been doing. And a question very closely related to this is accessible, is in the syllabus. And I'll show you that once we get to the end, okay? Yeah? Um, I was going through some past papers and a lot of the time the question already gave you which form you had to Yeah, to yeah, that's right. That's so correct. Are we ever going to get a question where we have to figure it out? I'm exactly going to... Um, answer that question once we get to the end of this, okay? Um, please remind me if I don't remember. Now, when you have a look at this, okay? This is interesting. Um, the heading is repeated linear factors, and you can see why, right? If I were to write this in the normal form that we've seen before, good morning, uh, I could write it like this, which would be extraordinarily unhelpful, because if I then wrote the, um, the three partial fractions, in inverted commas, I'd have something over x minus one, something over x minus two, and then, other something on x minus 2, that's not useful. That doesn't contribute anything, right? Does that make sense? So you can see, clearly uh, another approach is going to be required. So how do I do this? Uh, I'm going to show you the answer in a second, the approach that I need to take, but first I want to justify it a little bit, okay? Pause for me, you don't need to write this down. Suppose I were doing this not with polynomials, but just with numbers, just with arithmetic, okay? And if I said to you, here is a fraction, and it came from some other fractions, right? Um, some other fractions combined to create this one. In exactly the same way that some other fractions combined to make this one. Does that make sense? Right. How would you go about doing this? What, what kind of approaches could you take? Divide, Think about what we've just done. Dividing 17 into two different numbers, adding together. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some division of this numerator, obviously, just like here and some comparison, okay? But do you see, before I get to that, the thing, the mechanism that makes this work is these denominators, right? I need to factorize. If it's in factorized form, it'll be better for me, okay? The problem with this particular one is you have a look at the factorization. Right? What is the factorization? How far can you bring it down? Just let you know how we go as far as possible. How would you bring that down? Two times two times two times two. Times yeah, three. it's two cubed, which is eight, times three. Right? Now, this is a problem for us, okay? Because when you think about this, and you think about the original <coughs> fractions that went into it, you can't necessarily know, oh, there must have been like a half, t you know, one over two term that went in there, or some number over two. Um, there could be uh, some number over four, or some number over eight. All of those could have gone in there. And in fact, with this particular fraction, here's the problem with just numerals. Um, there's, a, there's a vast number of different combinations, as opposed to here, where there's a somewhat unique one, okay? So, I don't, I don't know whether it's like, oh, are there a half terms in there, or a quarter terms? or an eighth, or some mixture of all of them. I don't know from the beginning. Everything is too jumbled up. Once you, if I started with this and asked you to put them together, all this information would be lost if all you had was a number, right? With polynomials, the information is not lost because we can always factorize down. But with these guys, we're kind of stuck. Right? So therefore, when I have a look at this question, um, this is really one over two, one over two squared, one over two cubed. I don't know which one appears or how many of them. The same thing happens here. I don't know there will, whether there will be a 1 over x minus 2 or a 1 over x minus 2 or squared. Both of them could appear. So I have to account for both of them. So here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to let this equal not two fractions like this. right? All that would do is give me a quadratic denominator. I need a cubic one. Okay? So to introduce that as well, I need a third fraction. 
okay? Now this is the equivalent of the, you know, a half, a quarter, an eighth. This is the a quarter term, right? This could easily be um, something that contributes to this, and as you'll see, it is. When you set it up like this, it works in exactly the same way. I'm going to combine, I'm going to compare coefficients, or let x equal some kind of convenient value. So this is going to be equal to, let's have a look here. I want to get them all on this denominator, right? So how many a terms will I have? It's going to be x minus 2 all squared. Do you agree with that? If, if my denominator is going to be this, right? Can you see if I cancel these, I'd come back to my original fraction. So looks good. What about b? How many of these terms are I going to get? X minus 1 and x minus 2 have to be added on. And then lastly, the c term, all I need is the x minus 1, and then everything will come out in the wash. OK, good. If I let the numerators uh, be equal to each other, therefore, x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now I can choose some convenient values. What would you like me to choose? How about x equals 1? You can see when I do x equals 1, because of the way this is configured, it's going to get rid of not one, but two terms. This one and this one, both going to vanish. Do you see that? Okay. So let's let equal x equal 1. What do you get on the left-hand side? 1 minus 2 plus 3. Good. And that's equal to, uh, for this particular value of c, uh, let's see here. So a, rather. So this is going to be a times negative 1 squared. This is going to become 0, and this is going to become 0. You see that? See them disappear? So it looks like I've just got A on the right hand side. What do I get on the left? Two? Two. Are you happy with that? Yep. Choose for me another convenient value. One. I just two. did one, right? Oh no, sorry, two. <laughs> I'll go for two. How convenient. Let x equal two. And you can see on my left hand side, I'm going to get 4, take away 4, plus 3, right? Uh, which terms disappear on the right hand side? A the A term disappears, the B term also disappears, and you just get left with C times 2 take away 1, which is very convenient, won't always come out so nicely, um, as you've seen before. So it looks like C is just going to be equal to 3. Okay, I've got A, I've got C. What would you like me to do to get the B term? Yeah, the X squared. yeah so there's no, I've run out of convenient values to put in because I've used up all my factors. So I'm going to compare X squared coefficients. What's the coefficient of X squared on the left hand side? It's monic, right? What about on the right hand side? How many terms contribute to the X squared? Yeah, you'll get an A here and a B there, X squared, and you won't get any C, will you? Okay. So A plus B, except I already know what A is, so that's 2. Okay, happy times. So you can see here, my conclusion is, therefore, the original fraction can be written in this form. Okay, A, I'm going to put the minus sign there. And three of these guys. Okay. So, uh, I said to you, yeah, this, this particular question, the way that it was phrased, you will not get assessed on. I don't think it's necessarily that bad. Like, you have a look through this. The mathematics is no harder than any of the other ones we did. What you will get asked is, they'll provide you with this line. This is exactly what Nikita was mentioning before. They'll say, okay, can you prove this? Can you prove it? And then can you do something with it? For instance, now that I know what form it looks like, if I wanted to, I could integrate both sides. Could I not? This would be a log. This would be a log. What's this guy going to be? Yeah, this is 3 x minus 2 to the power of negative 2. And because the inside, the derivative of the inside is just a constant, you can just do reverse chain rule on this. Okay? So the question, a secondary part might be, Hence integrate that, right? That's a fairly common way to ask the question. So they might show this to you, and then if you wanted to prove it, well, it's actually very easy, just add the fractions together, uh, which you could do to confirm that that was the right answer, okay?